Sarah, what are we doing here today? So we've come to the Environmental Extreme Labs at the University of Brighton to see what happens when you run at extreme temperatures. I feel like I've packed for the weirdest holiday. I've got a woolly hat and a vest. <laughs> Let's go. We've seen lots of runners take on races in crazy temperatures. For example, Marathon de Sables, where temperatures can peak to 50 degrees, or Badwater 135, where the evening start temperature in 2018 was 47 degrees. Or even the North Pole Marathon, where it can go as low as minus 30. But what happens when your body runs at these extremes? Well, we wanted to find out, so cue some very cold and very hot runs. Unfortunately for us to do this safely, we also have to have a thermometer up our bums to measure core temperature. <laughs> here. Tape around here. It's just so, it looks big. Mm. <laughs> there it is. Uh, just knowing the other end of that is, <laughs> is somewhere. Where's the other end of that? You don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. Did you, did you, you bend over and cough? <laughs> hey, look, I'm alive. 37. And your normal. That, that's you. That's basically you. Oh, no. no. That's the temperature inside. Good that it normal. It's good that it's normal. It means you put it up correctly. Correctly. <laughs> yeah. So, well done. Warning you now if you do not put it up correctly and it starts slipping, you will be asked to wander in there. So, readjust yourself. Yes. So we are starting off with cold temperatures. I'm about to head into the lab first at minus 10. Bearing in mind I'm used to 10 degrees. <laughs> this is probably gonna feel quite cold. We're just gonna see what happens to our bodies when we're running for around 25 minutes at that temperature. Put the gloves on. Put the gloves on. Let's go. Oh! <laughs> ah! ah. Feeling great, that is... Cold. You're going to sit there for five minutes. I sit. Sit in five minutes. Sitting on the probe. It's so cold. <laughs> to think that there are, obviously, I'm wearing what I would wear for a usual, like, winter run um, because we didn't want to get into if you were going to go and do the North Pole Marathon, for example. That's when you get into extreme technical kit and you'll be having a number of different layering systems to make sure that you're not sweating through to the outside because if the sweat reaches the outside, then it could freeze and you put yourself at risk of like hypothermia, for example. So I am just in what you would wear in the winter in the UK. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I'm trying to keep the probe in. It's amazing how instantly, as soon as you start running, it's like, okay, it's cold, but my body's instantly gone into like, let's go, let's go, it's fine. Like inside my body, it feels normal, but then like just the outside of my legs and my face and my arms feel cold. Yeah. So basically every single breath Sarah has taken while that, that tube was in her mouth is now in here. So we can start selling this. <laughs> for gold. We can start selling it. So how many breaths? So this does this? like 45 seconds. So this is so 45, 45 seconds, seconds worth, yeah. worth of Sarah's exhalations. All right, minimize the dribble. Oh, it's weird when you stop because you feel like, I don't know, when you're running, you don't really notice that you're still in the cold. So I don't feel cold from like waist down, I feel cold to like the outside of my skin feels cold. But because waist up, I'm really warm because I've just finished running. It's a weird, like it feels a little bit difficult to speak. How oh. was it? Cold. Oh my God, you feel the difference when you come out here. How are your hands? That's what I want to know because that's my what I'm most worried my about. Hands are okay, lovely. Have fun. Is it connect? Is it? Come through. Ah! <laughs> it's so cold. Yeah, it's currently minus 10 degrees and I'm actually shivering already, so which is not a good sign, but hopefully once I start running, I'll be okay. But right now, quite uncomfortable. Quite uncomfortable indeed. Feeling good. Speed is fine. I'm so cold, it's so hard to speak. And my lips are freezing over. But I feel like my torso is fine. My hands and feet, not so much. If you can see, I'm literally sweating already. We're about 10 minutes in and the heat, I mean the cold, isn't affecting me anymore. I'm actually overheating. I want to know what my temperature looks like from the outside. But as it stands, I'm quite warm right now. Mo's doing good. We've just noticed, look at the condensation on the window. 
which shows you the difference in temperature from in here to in there. Although, look at the condensation on his face. Shining. Shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, he's almost so he's at 38.9. If he went to 39.2, is that right? If he went to if he went to 39.2, we'd have to pull him out. As in get Mo out of the fridge, not the probe out of his eye. Does this look like minus 10? May! Look! Oh my god, look at his little hat! Look at his hat! I told you this would happen to the hat. Do you can you go weigh yourself now? Yes. Before you sit down because your sweat will dry and you'll get cold quite quickly. <laughs> it's like a warm bar. Right, are we happy or are we sad? I'm sad. I hate the heat. <sighs> oh my god, Mo, slow. Is, is that 12? It's 11. I'm just so sticky. It's just everything, everything feels sticky. Ah! Oh! This is so gross! How do you feel when I'm there with the of face? I'm not happy about it, but oh my god, this feels so much better. We're going 10 kilometers an hour, so six minutes kilometer pace, which should feel so easy for me, but literally feels like I'm dragging my legs through mud. I know I'm running wrong, but equally, if you told me to run properly right now, I can't. Like, I know it should be like this, but this is all I can do. So Sarah was supposed to do 25 minutes and she just about cleared 20 minutes. So five minutes early, she decided to stop. And I think it's because she was just, the, the heat is unbearable in there. And I think it was just a bit too much. You all right? Yeah. Being lightheaded this here? Yeah, a bit lightheaded, yeah. a bit sick. Bit like I could wet myself. Yeah, okay. But I won't. Okay. It's funny how when you go from running in it to then standing in it, you can feel how like all of your adrenaline was just going, it's fine. So five minutes, you'll be fine. You'll be right. So your core temperature is going to go up now. Oh no. It's 38.85. You were 38.85. So that's quite warm. Exactly. Yeah. That is quite warm. That's quite warm. Yeah. Can you, Would you like some water? go weigh yourself, please? And yeah. then you can have some water. Mo, are you ready? I think, yeah, I, I, I'm ready for the heat. I would like to say it's not that bad, but um, <laughs> you saw what happened. I, I witnessed what happened. It's worrying, but we're going to enter the heat and hopefully survive. Let's go. Ooh, this is nice. It's a chilling hot all the way. This this is beautiful. I, I need, you know, I need cucumbers on my eyes and I just need to relax. I'm, I'm living my best life right now. Wow, this is hot already. Minute in and I'm sweating. Literally, everything's just gone sideways. You feel more comfortable in this one than the cloth? Definitely more comfortable, but this is harder for sure. But it's a more comfortable run. I think compared to the cold, I was in pain. Now I'm not in pain, I'm just fatigued. And it's definitely harder to keep the legs sticking over. Wow. That was hot. Sounds amazing to me. 78.2. Yeah, we thought we would dive into the results a few days later. Now, there is so much data from what we did. Thank you so much to Chanel and Anya who have gone through all of it for us and put it into some very pretty maps that we'll put up on screen. But we've got the top line that we're going to go through. I'm going to read Sarah's. Sarah's going to read mine. <laughs> and we're going to see what uh, they recommended for us to do going forward and how we should approach our training. So, yeah. Sarah's line number one, I just want to point out, drink more. <sighs> You need to drink more, I Sarah. knew this, I knew. <laughs> the worst thing is, is that I knew going into this, I was like, right, okay, I'm terrible at drinking enough. I'm gonna try and drink lots, because we got told to do that beforehand. We did. I drank more than I've ever drank, and I was still dehydrated. So I think that was a bit of a wake up call, and that's probably why I do suffer more with running, because if you go into it dehydrated, then you're gonna feel terrible the other side. Exactly, and especially running in the heat. So another one is that Sarah found out she suits colder climates more so than the hotter climates. Yeah. Which I find really interesting. Put that me some in with the polar be, bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you should have done the winter 10K instead of I me. Um, yeah. Some people can be like more predisposed to preferring an environment than another. I know it sounds like natural, but 
it's yeah, just I, nice to actually see it on on data. Yeah, and I didn't actually think that the data would show that. I thought, you know, everyone would have personal preferences. We knew going into it that I liked cold, mm -hmm. you liked hot. Yeah. But actually, the data kind of backs it up as well, which is interesting. So, firstly, they've said well done because you did everything fasted, which of course is gonna is gonna affect your results. You went into it slightly dehydrated, mm -hmm. um, so you're an absolute trooper. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they said you've really suited the hotter conditions, but equally you're good in the cold. So physiologically speaking, you can't get out of any hot or cold challenges. I, I'm oh, in the no. UK. Everything I do is a cold challenge. Don't so worry. Please, we'll hot challenges are only. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick me. you on a plane and make it a bit colder. <laughs> um, so they've said hydration was a big factor in your results. Your dehydration got worse throughout the day as expected. So it did kind of skew your results, leaning towards you being more heat intolerant than you are. However, you are fully capable of working at those temperatures. You were way more dehydrated than I was, mm -hmm. but actually performed better in, in the, the heat. heat. Yeah. So I guess that just shows that... It's the Egyptian blood. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cold-wise, however, perceptually is what you found the most difficult. Physiologically speaking, you were within safe limits and could have continued past where our protocol ended with no in issues. It was freezing. So I couldn't have should, continued. We should have just left the you in there <laughs> the for an hour. Lie. It was <laughs> so cold, guys. You don't understand. I'm not I'm not built for the cold. Um, I know I, hit, I live here, but I'm not built for the cold. Um, she did say I need to focus on sleep. Again, another thing that has been influenced by Ramadan. So I taken that on board. Hopefully on the other side of this that I can focus on de rehydrating and sleeping a bit more. I would love to know in the comments, were you expecting to see that or were you really surprised by what happened? And actually, what one do you think you would do better in? Mm, Cold yeah. or hot? Fancy a race in the North Pole? <laughs> no, no. But if you do want to see how I got on when I went and did a race in Thailand, then go and click here.